Today on 15 on 15, three local airline carriers could be involved in the development of a plan to make Aruba as a hub for inter-island traveling. Also in our lifestyle segment, we'll show you how to transform a book into art. And breaking the glass ceiling was a complete success. We'll tell you why the Aruba Trading Industry Association is happy. Hi, I am Aishal Simon sitting in for Yentalu. We start off this edition of 15 on 15 with some good news. American Airlines announced recently that they will increase their airlift to the island. Starting November 6th, American will add one more flight to their itinerary from Miami, making it now three flights per day for a total of 21 flights per week. This additional flight represents 1,120 more seats per week to and from Aruba. These extra flights not only are good for the tourism, but also for our locals that have more possibilities to travel to the U.S. by using Miami as their hub. Staying on the topic of airlines, there is a new petition at the Department of Civil Aviation to establish a new local airline company. But the department is still discussing with the local investors about the possibilities. Also, the department recently elaborated on the plans they have for three local carriers to make Aruba a hub since Insel Air is introducing new aircrafts. Aruba Airlines is already using their two aircrafts and the reorganization of Tiara Air will make inter-island traveling much more viable where they can co-share with each other. For example, when buying tickets from one company and flying on another. This initiative will create all strength necessary to maintain these airlines in the region. Lots of new ideas are emerging to make the visitors stay on the island more enjoyable and for that a new concept called Happy Check-In. But tomorrow I will have more on this unique experience. Now switching on to news of health, the Medical Institute of San Nicolas, better known as IMSAN, has expanded their dialysis facilities to offer patients the service of hemodialysis in their nephrology department due to the fact that patients have renal problems and this is increasing on the island. This department has been in function for over a year now. For those patients whose renal functions fell below 10%, a hemodialysis is now possible. For someone to be referred to this department, a doctor's approval is necessary. Sometimes it is very difficult for doctors to detect this type of disease on time since it is very silent and treacherous. Some people don't feel a thing until they notice a swollen face, high blood pressure or anemia. In many specific cases, this means that the kidneys are not functioning 100% and depending on the severity of the disease, there could be more symptoms. Earlier symptoms of kidney disease are liquid retention, swollen feet, not hungry at all, weight loss, neurological disorders, blood in urine and foaming in urine. Doctors can detect if patients suffer from a renal problem by taking a simple urine test. IMSAM works very closely with Dr. Horacio Hodeberg Hospital to make the service more effective and efficient for their patients, which sometimes is the same group of persons. The doctors at IMSAM suggest the proper exercise. The doctors at INSEM suggest that proper exercise, good eating habits, checking blood pressure frequently, control sugar intake, and weight control a few times a week to prevent kidney disease. This facility is now acquiring two new machines so they can expand their services more. We take a quick break now, but first, what does a mannequin and an app have in common? When we return, we have that for you. This is also coming up in the lifestyle segment. Watch. Are books a thing from the past or is book reading slowly fading away? Well, not for Stephanie who lives in Mexico who recently discovered what she can do with those pages that people don't want to read anymore. She is taking literature on one step ahead. It's literature and art at the same time, all made up from a page of a book. Stephanie Sanchez, a book sculptor, says that the possibilities are endless. One can do anything. There are obviously more complicated things than others, like working with curve pieces, but according to her, it's complicated to make shapes with paper, but not impossible. The technique requires patience and a lot of passion, and one has to select a special book that is transformed into a piece of art. 
It all starts with cutting, pasting, and folding for many hours and days, so that the paper takes the shape that Stephanie visualized. In her mind, she shows her most recent called The Art of Resting, where a woman is comfortable and relaxed position, and in this case, she is reading a book. You can also see the animals that come out of the grass, amazing constructions, or enigmatic woman. Sometimes the book's theme doesn't match up with the sculptures, so anyone can interpret what it's all about. This once again proves that art is everywhere. You only have to discover it. A mannequin that tells you what it's wearing. Dummies that talk to shoppers via their smartphone. It seems confusing, but it works. Take a look. Smart mannequins that talk to the shoppers through their smartphones. Yes, it is a reality. Some stores in England adapted their smart mannequins with beacons that sense alerts to the smartphones of shoppers who are passing within the 50 meters, providing them access to the information about what they are wearing. People who download the associated app, designed by a British company called Inconami, can learn about the clothes and shoes, in terms of where to find them in the store and how much each item costs. The app can also connect to the retailer's website, which means items spotted in the window can also be bought online regardless of the time of the day or whether the store is open. The communication between the mannequin and shopper is effectively in the form of images and the information on the screen or the smartphone. However, in the future, it could be a spoken conversation. One of the stores that is using this technology in London is Hawes & Curtis. And now for Tech Bytes. If you had trouble logging in into Sony's PlayStation Network over the weekend, it looks like prankster hackers were to blame. A group or individual calling itself Lizard Squad, boasted on Twitter that it caused an interruption service for several online video game networks. Along with PlayStation, there were also interruptions with EVE Online, League of Legends, and BlizzardBattle.net. Now Sony says hackers did not hack personal data from the members, rather this was a disrupted denial service attack, which causes chaos by flooding the networks with more requests that it can handle. So people are blocked from logging in. Sony and other networks are back on track now. After the break, we will have more for you. Stay tuned. Recently, the third Woman in Leadership Conference was held at the Renaissance Convention Center organized by the Aruba Trade and Industry Association. In the previous conference, Atya focused on motivating women. This time, they wanted to take it a step further. Atya believes that women on our island have the capacity to occupy any leader position on the island. Even if there are obstacles, it has been proven that most women can be leaders in their jobs and at home. This is why Acha looked at another direction this time. Breaking the glass ceiling is not a common terminology and it promises to broaden the horizons and achieve their objectives as leaders in our community. The four invited speakers, Franjo Guadalupe, Anita de Groot, Michelle Ryan and Carmen Breveld made sure that every woman that were present got all the necessary information on how to apply these tools and break the barrier in the world of business on the island. It is not easy but not impossible as many women expressed that they felt they are not moving up the ladder. Atya is convinced now that every woman who attended the conference in some way has exceeded those barriers. This conference was moderated by our very own Yentl Lu prior to her departure to Canada. This is Yentl's second consecutive year hosting the event. She had to catch a flight that same day, but because she feels that these type of events are so beneficial and significant, she could not say no to being a part of it. So, tomorrow we will have an expert that attended the conference as a speaker and her points of views and research in helping women break the glass ceiling. And staying on the topic of women who are climbing up the ladder, after quite some time, the court department of Aruba is very proud to add one more judge to their lineup of eight judges. Mrs. Naftali Engelbracht is now officially Aruba's ninth judge, a very important acquisition for both the court and the justice system of the kingdom. And as the newest female judge on Aruba, it surely is a very important moment for the island. This proves that women these days are occupying the most important leader's position on the island. Congratulations to Mrs. Naftali Engelbracht on the behalf of the entire ATV staff and 15 on 15. 
That's it for this edition of 15 on 15. Have a nice night and I'll see you back tomorrow.